Right, hello once again YouTube, and welcome back to some Kerbal Space Program, uh, 1. Yeah, so for those of you who saw the first impressive video I did on 2, uh, while initially I had fun, I came out of it with a really sour feeling. Um, when I sort of thought about it a bit more, like, I'd only really hoped that Kerbal Space Program 2 would be like, like a basic version of stock KSP-1 that ran great, looked great, had the new parts, but was very bare bones. It's not really what we got. It was kind of buggy. It was just kind of a mess. It didn't perform great. There was the huge lag spikes, both when loading and also in the... It was when staging and also when crashing. And it was just a little bit sad because I've been looking forward to Kerbal 2. I was like, please have got this right, they've delayed for ages, it should be great, and it's just not. So, I figured we'd show off. There's a lot of the regulars that are on now joined because of her from the depths, one around for my first Kerbal playthrough. And I do rather enjoy it. I thought we'd show off uh, what Kerbal has the potential to be. By showing off the first game with some mods, with some of the better mods. Um, or just, in general, some mods really into us all. Uh, because the first Kerbal's really very good at this point. It's had a lot of refinement, it's had a lot of work, even if it has some problems. I would argue it's a hell of a lot better than 2. And I'm going to take a bit of uh, inspiration from, I believe it was... Was it Cringe you suggested this? Someone on, the, someone on the thing suggested it. I haven't completely written off the idea of picking up a new game anyway to a new series at some point, but... Someone suggested we could just do some Kerbal 1, and I'm like, yeah, no, I do like that idea. Like I said, I want to show off what this game could have been. We're going to do science mode, which I don't normally do. I normally do uh, career or... Actually, no, I mostly just do career these days. Science mode is like a simpler career. So, unlike in Korea, you don't have contracts, but you don't have funds either. So we don't have to pay for a rocket. So what I'm thinking is we'll do this mode. We won't have to worry about funding, even for the really expensive parts. Like the sort of special antimatter engines and things, all that fun stuff. We just have to build them. And gain the side to unlock parts. So we're going to do that. Uh, we have got a few planet mods on. I think what my goal will be for this series. In the previous one. Right. Our goal was to go out to Elu and put a colony on it. Because in stock Kerbal. Elu's the furthest out you can go. Now I have two planet mods. I've got outer planets. Might be three planet mods. I'm not sure. I think it might be three. So we've got outer planets. We've got something else that I can't remember the name of. And we've got one that I think it's Kerbal's. Humble Neighbouring Stars, I believe is the name. Which adds some new star systems. So what I'm thinking is, our goal for this series will be to put a colony, not on Elu, but out to one of these new star systems. We're going to have to go really dang far. I think that sounds like a bit of a fun game, so we'll call this Kerbal... Kerbal Pony Program 2. Let's go. So yes... We do have, I believe, Blue Shift, which I think is the Warp Drive one. So we will be able to warp out the planets um, once we have that tech, but it's right at the end of the tech tree. So our main goal will probably be to, to max down the tech tree to get to one of these warp options. We can also try setting out a slow boat probe on um, something like antimatter or fusion torches or nuclear salt water. I don't know how that works. Oh, shoot, I've clipped the mic, sorry. But we'll give it a try. Maybe try and do that earlier, Sean, and then while we're doing other missions, we could wait for that to cross space. So if we go to the tracking station, we've also got some graphical mods. If the game gets a bit laggy, I might have to install some of these mods. I am recording. Probably makes not amazing at the moment, but it's been pretty alright when playing. I don't know how much more um, stress I'm putting on it by also recording at the same time. It may be that comes uh, episode 2, I've taken out some stuff. Yeah, I know, we're in the tracking center. Yeah, big lag spike. I may indeed have to take some stuff out. Right, yes, and our... Uh, our two neighboring planets are different. We have... Takashi. Which, instead of, instead of the moon, I guess, which I notice it has a lot of water and some sort of spotty islands. A lot of craters. Yeah, we've got Astronomer's Vigil Pack doing the, the graphics, but I might have to remove that because it is a bit lag-inducing. And we've got, what is this one called? Shibo. <laughs> Info. Yee. 
Is that a case that we haven't filled these out? No, they have. It's just that one just says ye. Large satellite orbit Kerbin has water and life on it, created during various sizes. Uh, been there for a lot longer. Hmm. So one of our moons has water on it. And it has an atmosphere, which is a good sign. The rest the same. I have not looked too hard at this. Is it lagging? I think it's lagging. There's Eve, looking pretty normal. Is Gilly just not here? Gilly is just missing. Okay, good start. Okay, it doesn't help that I can't remember exactly what planet mods I've got installed. Hmm, Moho's looking a bit different. Marato Marot Maratoy. Carbon mythology is a fiery place of oceans of flowing lava. That's just interesting. <laughs> I see. Hot rock. Okay, is that still Kerbal? It is still Kerbal. It's looking a little different. It's looking very pretty. Do not, yeah, a lot of moons are missing. Oh, did I have something like Kerbal Origins? Is that why these are all different? That might be the other planet pack. I can't remember exactly. Oh, God, the like. Yeah, I may need to remove Astronomers, which is a shame because it looks very nice, but. Red Dot, you can see really, she squicked really hard. <laughs> sure, both, because if it's lagging this badly now, it, we're definitely. <laughs> bruh. It's definitely not going to run well by the time we get uh, out a long way. This is the only thing, of course, Kerbal, uh, while well, it's very moddable, you have to be a little bit careful of how much you throw at it. Yeah, Dres looks exactly the same. I, I like how it's not even improved. Uh, Javara. Interesting. Uh, come on. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to... We'll run this episode as is, but I'm definitely going to have to uninstall some mods between them. I'm saying we'll run it like it is specifically because I... Actually, no, I might even end up just, like, cutting the episode midway and just uninstalling the mods. It might look a little bit worse, but... Laughing. That looks like Lathe to me. But at least it doesn't look very different. Veroto? A Vale, maybe? Hmm, some blue and rocky. Tartas. Oh, it's Tylo, but it's got an atmosphere. On the look of it. That actually probably significantly improves the place. Makes it more landable anyway. Happy door. Happy door. Uh, I believe this is out outer planet spot. Oh god. Gas giant, very pretty. Uralo. It's a brown rock. Pembuco. What's confused for Eve? Whoops. Oh god, yeah. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some video editing later. It's definitely lagging. I say I'll 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 remove some of the visual mods. Hopefully that'll be all it takes because it'll cut the textures down, but Oh my god, Sarnus has a lot of stuff. Okay. I like the shadow on the ring, so that's nice. Hail. Couple of asteroids in the rings themselves. Ovok? Ah, yes, I remember this one. Egg. Egg rock. I believe if you try to land on the edge, you have a chance of being thrown off. Oh, there's Elu. Yeah, I forgot the outer planet pack uh, moves Elu. Yeah, it's around the gas right now. Slate. Big heavy rock. Tecto. Ooh. Big heavy rock with some big cracks in it, by the look of it. Xyla. It's a brown rock with some snow on it, by the look of it. One, two, three to look at, but maybe it's got something fancy out there, who knows? Erlum, this will be Uranus, I'm guessing. Yes, although no actual tilt. It's got spotted by default in the game. It's got a brown gas janet. That's that. Uh, rotates around its axis in a clockwise fashion. Oh, I think it's going the other way as well. It's orbiting a different direction to all the other planets. Pelter, big black rock. Uh, and Perex. Lumpy Black Rock. Doing well on those. Ah, this one's got a sub moon as well. Wall. I'm guessing because it looks a bit like a walnut. And Tau. Again, just want to do a quick preview of all the places we might have to go. Shiny Moon. It's metal. At least the, the stock system, anyway. I say stock system. Stock system plus extras. We'll also have a very quick look at one of the stars, but 
I don't know exactly what's out there. I'm going to keep some of that to a secret. Nidon. It's a purple ice giant, apparently. And that that bow. Yeah, it's got some lumpy bits, but that's about the most I can say. It looks like it's mostly ice. Uh, oh, and they've got a really high incline planet, Nise. See? Hmm. Not especially fancy looking, but it's in a weird orbit, so I guess that'd be a chance to reach at some point, maybe. And Plock, which I guess is meant to be Pluto. Yeah, being a proper planet or just a lump of ice. Yeah, it's a Pluto. And if this is Pluto, that'll be Charon? Car Karen? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Okay, so we've got two little rocks. Yes, yeah, so if we scroll out from the Kerbin system, we should see, yeah. These little dots. Mike. Biggest star of the pack with the most planets. Very bright. Hello, lava planet. Yeah, so it's just after a visit. Like I say, I'll, I'll see how our first launch goes for lag, but I think we might well be taking some stuff out. Now, of course, we're in science mode, so it doesn't matter about budget. We can build whatever we like. Uh, Counterpoint. We're at the very beginning of the campaign, so we have very little available. Hello, water. Yeah, and how to build a rocket. And we do have some parts for building a lot of smaller rockets, like sanding rockets. Uh, but we can start with the traditional. Oh, that is Discord. <laughs> that's the that's the BWA Discord. You've already seen that. If you're a close follower of the channel, uh, I think that was even a uh, discussion we were having about what game to cover next, particularly. Um, I think War Thunder was also brought up, which is quite a funny idea, personally. But I'm just like. Maybe not. That game has some problems. Like, a uh, huge grind. Um, mark one space flinger. And it flings us vaguely towards space. I'm going to have a mystery goo pod, which gathers science. Uh, I will go over some of like, the, the reasons why we're designing the rockets like we are. Uh, but in this case, it's quite simple. We have capsule the whole Kerbal. Two science experiments, one for when we're on the launch pad, because they you can use them at different times, one for when we're taking off. Parachute to bring us down safely. Decoupler to drop off the booster once we're done with it. Booster to kick us towards space, and fins to, to apply drag and keep us going in the right direction. No, nothing we're building at the moment is going to be particularly complicated. At least not for mission one or two, anyway. That said, I may indeed need to brew some mods to prove load times and things. I'll try not to remove too much, because I like the idea of having a... Like I say, the idea was to show off a fair bit of what Kerbal can look like, but I suppose you'll get the idea from the initial launch, right? <coughs> so it's on, stabilise us, let's have a look at the goo. The mystery goo. Three sites. Do a crew port on the launch pad. You can also... Collect it to add it to the uh, add it to the pod, which means we'll be able to do another crew report once we take off. And three, two, one, up we go. Crew report. Shores are inviting. You watch the waves roll into the coast. It will tilt away from the water pad a little bit. That's our booster burned up. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, they changed the message. Who wants to send someone out? They might lose their grip. Nope. <laughs> nope. We don't want to do an EVA report. That's the one we go outside to. Get some data. We'll die if we do that. The goo jiggles and wobbles as the craft flies. We can do that once we're landed, but... And a couple. Parachute out. Hopefully we don't get clonked by a booster on the way up, but it doesn't look like it. Now spinning a little bit, but that'll stop in a moment. Well, you know, life stabilizers. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, we get max level Kerb. Oh, we get max level Kerbals. Well, does that mean we just start with max level uh, scientists? We'll just get a ton of extra science if we bring them along. That might indeed be the case. That's a very big boost. Oh, also, we'll get. Do we get Mech Jab right off the bat? No. Okay, we do have to unlock Mech Jab. Mech Jab is our autopilot. <coughs> um, 
It's not that I can't do some of these maneuvers manually at this point, but I don't enjoy doing a lot of them manually, and Mech Jeff's a lot better at doing a lot of them manually. Plus, anything more complicated than leaving the carbon system is something I, I am not capable of. I very much tend to just leave that to the autopilot to tell us, like, right, you need to burn in this direction at this time. I'm just like, yep, yeah, go ahead, do the thing. Use up however much fuel it takes. We've hopefully budgeted for it. And now descending. The safe landing speed is usually below about 10 meters a second. Parachute won't open fully until we're at the right altitude, which speaking of, we can cut that down so we're not drifting for quite so long. 550 should still open with plenty of time to slow us down to safe speed. Looks like we're going to land in the water as well, which, uh, for those who don't know of Kerbal, um, landing in the water used to be far more dangerous than landing on land. Uh, because it wouldn't slow you down when you crashed, ironically enough. Now the water is a lot safer. Sanity has uh, been improved a bit. Yes, I've done this landing enough times to know no, you can do it at roughly 550 and you'll be okay. Although, glad I didn't go for 500 because that would have been a bit close. There's our booster smashing down and... Bloop. Now we can do an EVA. EVA report. I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here, was it? Oh, we can do surface samples right off the back because we've got the things upgraded. I forgot about that. You're taking a sample of the water here. There are bits of vegetation in it. It's suggesting a strong likelihood that there's land nearby. I mean, I don't know what's giving you that idea. Right, let's cover the vessel. Yeah, so I guess science gathering is going to be pretty quick early on because if we've got level 5 science kerbals, I'd be tempted to put them in the pod rather than the pilots. As high level scientists and engineers give you bonuses. Pilots have more options for the stabilizer. Yeah, I've only got science at the top. Although the it's got a weird border around that icon. I've never seen that before. Basic rocketry will give us access to just well a bunch of basic rocket engines and fuel tanks and whatnot. Engineering 101 will give us access to do science device, a thermometer, simply cores, basic batteries, antennas. Also takes survivability right away because I believe that also gives us yet another science experiment. Some more parachutes and things, some heat shields, which would be uh, useful because we'll see. Once we get to space, you, when you come back down, you come back down uh, fast. Yeah, so we'll take contracts, but we can't. I guess we can just hire people as we need them. Yeah, can we see the bonuses? Are we just getting the bonuses right off the bat? Yes, it must be. Our second flight could probably just be a slightly modified version of our first flight. Slightly, I mean, we're going to go a little bit more slightly actually. I have to do three of those, three of those. I need one of these. So, you can only usually do the same experiment once you've recovered all the data from it once per like area, so like the biomes or the planets or certain altitudes, depending on what the experiment is. So, we've already done a mystery goo at, at on the ground and low altitude. We're gonna try and go to high. So I'll have one for landed, one for low, one for high for each of those as well. I'm going to mark two space figure. Of course, to get to high, we're going to need a bit more cake. So, I think we have access to some new parts here. We might want well to take those boosters off. Yes. Delta V is kind of a measurement of how far you can go. That's why you basically always have this display up. Um... It's basically how much you can change your speed by, which is what matters when you're trying to go somewhere in space. Right. And I believe that's alright. I'm actually going to separate those two out. Oh, uh, should we put a heat shield on? I'm going to put a heat shield on. I don't necessarily know that we're going to get high enough to need it, but... It does add some weight, but... Just in case. I reckon if we go straight up, we might hit the edge of space, so... So it's to be black to match the uh, colour of the catch. Actually, no, we can change the catch as well, can't we? What have we got? Black and white or white? Uh, I guess white fits the rest of the rocket, right? Go for a red capsule. Or technically un unpainted, but a red heat shield. Nothing too complicated for these first launches. If you've played Kerbal, you've, you've built craft very similar to this, probably. But yes, it'll be interesting playing without the budget. 
so we can build some uh, sillier stuff than I normally would and not have to worry about making them really cheap. Get a space station going really early, maybe. Temperature scan. Temperature readings are quite literally nominal. I've also just realised I didn't need three experiments because I could just collect the data as we go, but... Ah, uh, well, I mean, the pod does have a limit on how much it can take. Ugh, lag spike. Yeah, we definitely need to get rid of those, uh... We definitely need to get rid of some of those visual mods. I'm sorry? You just exploded. Something just exploded. <laughs> no, that wasn't anything pod. We'll take an EVA report. I can take a surface sample from here? Why? I'm not on the ground. Okay. Surface is charred and coated with burnt rocket propellant. There are also trace amounts of conspicuous green substance. Uh oh. That's a little bit concerning. Oh, I meant to bring a scientist. Okay, that's fine. Three, two, one. Blast off. Yeah, we'll tilt away from the launch pad so if we do crash, we don't end up coming straight back down on it. Uh, adjust the staging so that that second booster will fire as soon as we detect the couple of the bottom one. This will show us how high up we're going. At the moment, we're going to go. We're up to 20,000 meters. 30,000. We can go past about 75. We'll actually make it into space. Yeah, no problem. We will lose a fair bit of speed because we've got high drag. Temperature scan. Mr. Goo, we're at high altitude, because you can see, because we've got some new stuff come up. Uh, the Goo seems to be getting very cold now. Report. Nothing much to say there. Oh, I should get, um, the other one I'll get is, a uh, what was it, Kerbal, it's like Crowdsource Science, the one that gives us more interesting uh, science reports to uh, actually read. Yes, it looks like we might indeed need, uh, need that heat shield, because we are going to reach space. Do a quick save, can we be a report? Yes, we're not moving too quickly that we get blown off. It's starting to feel you should really get back into the ship. You're probably right. Yeah, so normally, as long as you're out the atmosphere, or out the thick bit anyway, which is sort of from here onwards, you're probably okay to get out if you're not accelerating or re-entering. Uh, but getting out of the craft while it's in atmosphere in general is always a bit risky, and uh, I don't know if I'd recommend. Collect all the data. There we go, we've got some more because we've actually left the atmosphere now. Collected. Da -da -da, crew report. Seems we're in space right now. The sky seems to be mostly below us. The incident reads zero. It's as if it were in a vacuum. Probably is in a vacuum. EVA report. Cool. we got some science. Retrograde, please. Retrograde is basically point me away from the way I'm going. There's a reason you use this when you're re-entering. Points the heat shield towards the hot bit. Ablator is, um, so the way heat shields work is they're made of a metal that's designed to, like, burn away and take the heat with it, as well as resisting a lot of it. Uh, so if our ablator runs out, our heat shield gets to a point where it can much more easily just burn up. Now, at this speed, we're at no risk. I don't even know that we necessarily need the heat shield, but if you were to come in at, say, 4,000, or really just anything above sort of 2.5, really, you're going to probably need a heat shield. I think even at 2,000, it's a little bit iffy, but you might get through it, depending on how your craft's built. You've got something tough on the bottom. Yeah, we're barely even getting any re-entry heat, just a little bit of shockwave. Oh, I'm running a new biome, so we can get some new data. Flying over Kerbin's water. Right, yeah, we're over the water, not the shores, technically. Altitude will set you to 700. We're a bit heavier this time, so I don't want to risk it. Did also jettison the heat shield. Yeah, we've jettisoned the heat shield anyway. We're not, we're not on budget limit, so we don't lose the bit of money we would have gained for recovering the heat shield. Yeah, of course, normally we'd have a budget and we would lose... Um, a little bit of money, because you could you can gain a bit of money back on your craft by recovering them back to Kerbal, but not so much of an issue here. It's also not so much of an issue that if we lose crew, so we can afford to set up more, like, long-term bases on other planets in science mode, because, of course, the crew's infinite now. We can afford to lead them places and not have to 
recover them. There's a uh, cable crew are very expensive in the uh, in uh, science mode in career mode. Get an EVA report above the water. It's the most precarious situation. Hmm. High dive? Feel like a high dive jab at 100 meters up. You might actually be okay at that. Kerbals are fairly tough, but I don't entirely know that I want to risk that. Oh dear, these parts appear to be floating a bit. Uh, you've probably also noticed that I'm not necessarily one of the sillier Kerbal YouTubers. I actually I actually like the rocket science aspect of it. Not so much like the math, but oh I forgot to get another science thing, but the actually like building and flying like proper rockets that feel like actual rockets. Uh, so hopefully we'll actually have some success in this program, but who knows. So I'll try and throw out a few goofy things maybe at some point as well if I can think of them. I'm sure I'll be able to think of something. Look at that, 135 sides that early on in the Jeez, you really can get your money's worth on this uh, mode, apparently. Right, that wasn't with an actual scientist. We have a few options. We have basic science, which gives us a few bits of pieces. It gives us a well, science platform. Oh, that's for storing science. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you can also store science from like probes and then just like bring it down to the ground in a capsule. It gives us the probe. It gives us. Science Junior, which is another science module. Could go for general rocketry or something like flight control. Hmm. What's the bit to give us? Ah. Yeah, we'll have stability for the radial decouplers. Now, general rocketry for some bigger rockets because it's cheap. We'll probably be making very rapid progress early on. We'll have flight control, which starts to give us access to some of Jeb, uh, Mech Jeb's features, but I think we need. It's not advanced. What is it? I mean. Ah, oh, what's the mech jab one that starts to give us more control options? Space operation? No. I can't remember what it's called. It's something like... Ah, I think it's these ones. Unmanned tech. Scent. What's the one that gives us a maneuver planner? I know it's one of you. I think it's advanced flight control, but I can't see... Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong on that? Hmm. Very odd. Oh, well, we'll find it later. Uh, I reckon we've got time for one more launch this episode. Should we try and put a... Should we try and put a couple in orbit? I think we should try and put a couple in orbit. We don't have any new experiments, so... We might even just make this one a bit smaller and just do this as a little, uh... Hey, milestone thing kind of, kind of idea. So... The Mark III has been the last of the uh, R001s. So, solid rocket boosters. Cheap, efficient, powerful, not very controlled. Uh, we, we'd have a hard time putting this into orbit with those. We're going to switch to liquid rockets. Again, we also don't need all of that. No way, did we get a space report on the Delta on the Mr. Goo yet? I don't know if we have. We'll have one of those just in case. So, if we want to go to orbit, we want something with a bit more control. We have a liquid fuel tank, and we'll have a small-ish engine. Could go for the Black Arrows engine, but that's probably... Yeah, we'll go for the Black Arrows uh, Gamma 2. Uh, the Black Arrow, for those who don't know, is actually a British rocket. It's actually a rocket from my own uh, uh, home country. I believe it's the... I think it is just... Oh, what is it called? I can't think what the mod's called that adds it, but there is a specific mod that adds like the British one. Commonwealth Rockets, I think it's called. For the, uh, the Isle of Man space... I think it's the Isle of... Yeah, was it the Isle of Man at the Space Centre? Technically, add like one of the best launch records of any space program, because they, they launched like one and it worked or something. Or well, they never launched anything, I can't remember exactly, but there is something like that. We need about 4,000-ish, maybe a little extra to, to go into orbit reliably and come back. Maybe a little extra because it's manual piloting and it's me. We'll need a thrust to weight of above 1. And probably 1.5 on the lower stage to actually get us up there. Hmm. I guess there's a good bit of the way. That's 2,500. Ah, we can't have, a, can't have a shroud on that. Uh, uh, do an LTV 45, actually. Do an LTV 45? That's 15. 45. It was a swivel. That fuel tank could be bigger as well. Uh, yeah, 
time I do it, actually. 45. Ah, a little low. Hmm. Okay, let's rest away. It's a little low there. We'll need sea level of 1.5, I think. How about two of these? I like the spiral layout on these. You can see uh, a bit of paint. It's, I believe they paint patterns like that on the outside of rocket fuel tanks, so you can tell which way it's rotating from just looking at it from the ground. Have we got any... Yeah, we do. We got some solids to do the first part of the journey, so we'll use some big solid rockets. We also don't have the part limitations or size limitations that we would in Korea. I think this might actually be quite a uh, quite freeform feeling without a lot of the original limits. Because normally it would be limited to about 30 parts, quite strict size limits. We don't have a launch tower yet, so... We'll go with this. I think that should do it. Let's try putting a... This may be a mistake, because we're going to lose stabilization to some degree, but... We're going to try putting Bob on board, and I want to see if we're getting the bonuses to science. If he does the uh, experiments or whatever. Right. Mark three Space Flinger should be ready to go. Should have more than enough overall to get us there. Again, uh, between episodes, I'll cut some of the mods out to, to cut down the lag a bit, because it is a bit bad at the moment. It might not be amazing, because we've got the planet mods in general. I think we could do... I think we could also disable something else that will speed up a little bit. Hang on a sec. I believe if we do... Uh, where is it? Maneuver tool. Yes, because we've got Copernicus. Ooh. Nope, it's still stuttering a bit. Okay, I was going to say that's a lot better already, but... It's not perfect, but it's a little better. And again, I'll, I'll get rid of some of stuff. Okay, three, two, one. Lift off. Look at those pretty effects. They finally fixed the waterfall. Uh, so there's a mod called Waterfall that adds like nicer like rocket effects, and for ages a lot of the solid rockets were like broken. They had like a pink like stream through the middle that was clearly like missing texture or effect or whatever. And I think they finally fixed it, so they actually uh, look good again. I'm actually not seeing the normally when you mass over that they'd say like you have like a bonus to science, so maybe we don't get that. Cupus prograde, not quite that prograde. Come on. So what you want to do with launches is... Let's go straight up for a sec because I was tilting a bit too fast. What's called a gravity turn where you sort of... As you get higher and through the lowest part of the atmosphere, you start to tilt over because you kind of need to go... If you think of the orbit as like a big circle, the most efficient way to launch to it is to sort of launch into it and then kick yourself into it from there kind of thing. Not to go straight up and then point that way and go like that. It's like slightly more efficient. You can use the planet's rotation to give you a little bit of a bonus as well if you launch into it, into like the right direction. But if you want to, if you want to go to orbit the wrong way, it uses a bit more fuel. Oh, we're getting a bit of wobble. <clears throat> Craft is long and thin. We're getting a little bit of wobble. Forty-five degrees, I believe, is optimum. Gives you the the best combination of up, getting up to height and going. Oh, and I put in the, uh, sideways, I guess you'd, you'd call it. I know a lot of the principles of rocket uh, flight, I can't necessarily explain them the best, which is something I tried to make very clear in my previous playthrough. You can report, you get the same. Okay, so maybe the science thing doesn't matter so much, it's more for just deployable base stations and things. Maybe it doesn't matter at all in this one, I don't know, but... Right. We're out the atmosphere, and then I can create a maneuver node, which will be basically saying, "Hey, I want to go to here." You wait till you're out in the atmosphere, because if you don't, the drag is slowing you down, and your maneuver can end up in slightly the wrong place. Actually, don't think it makes a huge difference, but just in case, let's get to the right place. I want to balance it so we're roughly in a circular orbit, uh, which we will be there. So, that to there. Point us to node. The slightly annoying thing is, in the stock game, it's the one thing I will praise 2 for. 2 would just straight up tell you, start burning your engines at this point. We know our burn will take us about 40 seconds. But you don't want to do it 40 seconds before the burn, you want to do it at the halfway mark. You want half of it before you get to the mark, half of it afterwards. I know it's weird, 
Ours is 40 seconds, so basically we want to wait until 20 seconds, so we've got half of it on either side. Time warp a little bit. We'll do some science stuff. Hey, Mr. Goo, we didn't have an orbital one. Excellent. Two, one, 20, and fire. The other thing as well is it, they can get slightly screwed up on the timings if you have to stage midway because some engines are obviously less or more powerful than others. So it can require a little bit of finagling sometimes. Or a bit of rough guessing, honestly. And switch into our little engines. Smaller, more efficient engines will obviously allow you to go further with less fuel. So they weigh less and they can go further on and get less fuel with it. I forgot when we got near the end of the burn, we had to stop it. Always make them do stuff like that. Hooray, we're in orbit. We'll do a couple of quick orbits. Tell you what we could do. We could do. Can we do an EBA? Wait, hang on. Can we do. What can we do? Oh, we can do EVA reports. Oh, can we do EVA reports about different, like, biomes? No, we can. Cool. Why not? Let's do a couple of those then while we're up here. Basically getting out above different biomes and having a look. Ah, we won't spend too long doing that, though. Right. Retrograde. So we're going to point backwards. We're going to try and drop ourselves down. Are there trajectories? We have not. Try and make a best guess for dropping ourselves down over the desert airfield. And try and drop us in visual range of it. Could be a bit of fun, right? Right, so we need to wait until about 25 seconds. Oh, yeah, a bit. Ah, there. Might actually give us a little bit more leeway than that as well. Because <coughs> obviously the plant's rotating. I get that might also install uh, traject what was it, trajectories we needed. I can't remember what the other mod was. By the way, we'll do we'll do trajectories, we'll take off the um, some of the visual ones that are causing lag. It will still look fairly nice. Might not be quite as nice. Astronomer's pack is pretty looking, but again it does uh, does take up a lot more resources. We've already got quite a lot going on with the planet packs we have. That might be about right. Don't need that booster. We do need a heat shield. Oh. That came off the top? That's interesting. Is that just a quirk of that particular decoupler? Hmm. Weird. Once we get to here, we should hit the uh, the hot bit of the atmosphere. Or by which I mean a bit thick enough to generate some heat. There we go. See the Abelade is starting to burn off now. Start to slow down quite rapidly. Yeah, look at that. It looks like we're actually pretty on course for the uh, desert island. Good report. Heat rising from the sand causes the desert to move and shimmer. We're a little, yeah, we've got a full shot. Switch to above land so we can see how high up we actually are. Sea level is fairly consistent. Um, rain is not necessarily, so... 
Let's see, if we do collect, can we do a... Might be able to do a crew report once we get uh, down onto the ground and also an EBA report. Yeah, it wasn't too bad though, for a guess. I'm usually pretty bad at planning any kind of actual intercept manually. It's about the closest I've got it, I think. Oh, let's see if off. There goes the heat shield. Mm. Kaboom. An EBA report will fall nice and slowly. Still precarious. Nothing new there then. I think that's pretty much how the Kerbals roll in general when it comes to their space program. Ooh, Z fighting on the on the flag. That doesn't look quite right. Nothing's got a tiny bit wrong there. Thud. Crew port. Surface sample. Lots of sand and rocks here. You're thankful that you've been in a climate controlled environment. It sure looks hot out there. The sand is dry and loose and looks like it's going to take some effort to clean your gear afterwards. You may report. I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here, was it? Uh, again, no. But it was where we've been. Uh, but yeah. I think that'll put just about do it for episode one. Um, if there's any, like, type submission you'd like me to run, we're in science mode so we can afford to do some goofy stuff or some experimental weird stuff. So if there's any kind of uh, missions you want me to run, let me know. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure this will become, like, a enormous series on the channel. So if you guys have any ideas for, like, a main series you want me to do, let me know quickly, like, any games you want me to play or whatever, because I've got about a week of, like, basically a week off. So I have quite a lot of free time at the moment, so I'll be recording a lot this week. So keep me posted. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Oh, we got uh, a bunch of science. I don't know if we got any extra... Uh, no, I'm not seeing any extra, so I don't think the scientists matter in this one. Goodbye, all.